Welcome to part four of this Blender tutorial series where we're creating this cute robot character. If you haven't seen the previous parts, you can check out the tutorial playlist linked in the video description. So in parts one, two, and three, we modeled the entire robot. So in this part, we're gonna be doing the lighting and the materials. And speaking of materials, I did wanna let you know about a product that I've created, my Light Gobo Asset Pack. In this Light Gobo Asset Pack, you will get 150 Light Gobos, pre-set up for Blender's Asset Browser with custom thumbnails, sorted catalogs, and customizable settings for each light. Light Gobos are a great way to add realistic shadow patterns to your 3D renders, like light through a window, or sunlight shining through trees, branches, and leaves. The Light Gobos all have custom thumbnails in the Asset Browser, and all the assets are sorted into catalogs, including Cactus, Chains, city, clouds, fence, flags, grass, hands, leaves, people, shapes, stained glass, textures, trees, vines and ivy, window trees, windows, and words. Each light gobo can be customized by changing the default spotlight settings in Blender's light settings panel, but the light gobos have also been created as a custom node group with more custom settings. All the links to the product pages will be in the description. Now as I mentioned at the beginning of the tutorial series, I am going to be using Eevee, so let's click on the render engine here, this is on the render properties, let's change this over to Eevee, and then I'm also going to turn on the ray tracing because that will just make Eevee look a bit more realistic. And we'll go into the rendered viewport mode, so now let's add a light, so we'll go here to the world properties, I'm going to be adding in an HDRI light, so let's click on the yellow dot next to color, and I'm going to choose environment texture, and then we will open a texture. And so here is the Blue Photo Studio 1K HDRI from polyhaven.com. Link is in the video description if you want to download it, or if you purchase the tutorial project files, you'll get all the resources. And let's just open the image. So we have a nice HDRI with some nice lighting. Let's go here to the render properties, and I'm going to scroll down to the film tab. Let's open up film, and I'm going to turn on the transparent button, just so it's transparent, so it is not as distracting and then let's open up the color management and i'm going to be setting the view transform to filmic and then i'll set the look to very high contrast i like that color management now we haven't added any materials yet so it looks really white and blown out but i do want to add some lighting before we add the materials so i'm going to add a few more lights so i'm going to go to the add menu and i'm going to add an area light we'll scale the area light up and i'm going to rotate it over and let's just stick it like right up here maybe scale up a bit bigger and if i go to the area light settings i'm going to turn the power up to like a 500 and it might look a bit blown out but we are going to be adding materials to it so it won't look all white and blown out. I'm now gonna duplicate this light and we'll rotate it over. So this one's gonna be kind of like a main light and then this one is gonna be a bit of a rim light. So we'll just add a light right back here, maybe rotate it, just stick it right there for a rim light. And this one I'll make a bit less bright. So instead of 500, I'll go with like 400. So just a very basic lighting setup, but we can of course customize the lights later. Let's box select -like both lights and we're gonna move them into a new collection called lights and camera and click on create. So we now have a lights and camera collection. And just for now, I'm gonna click on this little selectables icon so that we can't select the lights. We can just select the robot. So now let's click over here to go to the shading workspace and we're gonna be creating some materials. So we'll go into the rendered view and let's first start by selecting the head. We'll add a new material and I'm just gonna call this metal. So for this material, I'm gonna start by searching for a noise texture. Let's drop the noise texture right down here. And I'm going to control shift select the noise texture to preview it. And then also make sure you have the Node Wrangler add-on enabled in the add-ons in the user preferences. And with the Node Wrangler enabled, I'm gonna hit control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping. And let's use the object coordinate. So I'll put the object into the vector. And the object coordinates is going to place the texture on the object more evenly. You can see right now it looks slightly stretched, but using the object coordinates, it's not stretched. Now let's change the noise settings. So I'm gonna leave the scale at five, but I'll turn the detail to 10, and then I'll turn the roughness all the way up to one. So it's a pretty detailed metal. So now what I wanna do is customize the colors. So what I'm gonna do is search for ramp, and we're going to add a color ramp and put this after the noise. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the color ramp color into the roughness. And let's preview the principal shader. So now there's gonna be slight variation, and so some parts are gonna be a little bit more rough and some parts are gonna be less rough. Now we are gonna edit the colors of the color ramp, but right now it's way too blown out and white. So let's turn the metallic all the way up to one so it looks like metal. And now you can see the roughness variation. And then let's also make the base color kind of like a grayish color. 
And if you do want to use the exact same hex value that I'm using for the gray color, you can punch in 727272 on the hex value if you want to, or just find a nice gray color that you like. So let's zoom in here to kind of the reflections, and then I'm going to change the color ramp colors. So first I'm going to drag them together so it's a little bit more contrasted, kind of like that. And then I'll make the black tab kind of like a mid gray color maybe a little bit darker, and then I'll take the white tab and I'm gonna make it slightly lighter. So a little bit like that, so you can kind of play around with those colors and just get slight variation. And if you do wanna use the exact same hex codes, the darker one over here on this side is going to be a hex code of 646464. And then on the other side, the slightly lighter gray is gonna be a hex code of 838383. So that is gonna be it for the base metal. It's a very simple material. So because I've added the material to that object, I'm just gonna press H to hide it. So I'm gonna select the next object, which is the screen. I'll click on new, and I can just call this screen. So this is just gonna be the black screen on the front of the robot. So this is gonna be very simple. I'm gonna turn the roughness down to like a 0.1, and then I'll make the base color fully black. So we have a nice shiny screen, and I'll hide that object. Then I'm going to select the antenna. We're going to click on the drop down, and I'm going to add the metal, and then hide the antenna. Let's now select the ear. We'll click on the drop down and add the metal. But then what I want to do is make the bolts have a dark metal. So I'll go into edit mode. And what I'm going to do is hover my mouse over the bolts and press the L key to select the linked vertices. So we just select the bolts. So now we're going to go over here to the side panel and we're going to click on the plus to add a new material in the material slots. And on the drop down, we're going to add the metal material. But then I want to duplicate it so it is a separate material so that when we change the material settings, it won't affect the first material. So I'm going to click on this little button right here to duplicate the material so it is separate and I'm going to rename this to dark metal. So now it's a separate material. We're going to click on the assign button. So now it's assigned to those bolts. So now to make the material darker, we can just take the base color here and we can just make it quite a bit darker, something like that. So it's a bit more of a black metal. And then what I'm also going to do is search for a hue saturation value node and drop it here between the color ramp and the principal. And I'm going to turn the hue saturation value up to like a two. So turn the value up to two. And you can see it's going to kind of change the roughness a little bit. So if I zoom in really close, you can kind of see it's changing the roughness a little bit of that dark metal. So it's a bit more rough. So I like that a little bit better. So we'll press H to hide that object. Let's now select the neck. We're going to click on the drop down and we're going to select the dark metal and then hide that object. And we're going to select the body. We're going to click on the drop down and add the metal and then hide that object. Let's also select the plates and things, the details. And for this, we're going to add the dark metal and then hide that object. So now what I want to do is add all the materials to the arms. So we're going to box select all the arms and then box select all of these arms. So we have all of these objects selected. So let's click on the drop down and we're going to add the metal. And then what we're going to do is click on the plus here to add a new material in the material slots. We'll click on the drop down and we're going to add the dark metal. And then now that these both have the metal and the dark metal in the material slots with all of these selected, but this one is selected last, we're going to press Control L and we're going to link the materials. So now all of these objects have the metal and the dark metal, but the dark metal is the second one, so you can only actually see the light metal. But now what I'm going to do is select this object, so select the upper arm, and we'll go into edit mode, and I'm going to deselect everything and use the L key to just select that circle there. And we'll click on the dark metal and then click on the assign button. We'll go back to object mode, we'll select the lower wrist or the lower arm, go into edit mode, Use L to select the ball and socket joint, click on the dark metal and assign that. So we can now hide these two objects. So just select them and hit H to hide them. Now for the wrist here, I actually just want to have the dark metal, so I'm gonna delete the metal. So with the wrist selected, click on the metal and then click on the minus here just to get rid of it. So it just has the dark metal and then we can hide that object. Now we're going to select the claws and hide the claws because they're just going to have the metal, but then we're going to select the palm and we're going to go into edit mode and I'm going to go to the face select and we're going to select this face here and also the back face and we're going to click on the dark metal and click on the assign button. So back in object mode, you can see the dark metal is just inside the palm there. So we'll hide that object. And then we're also going to select the shoulders and hide the shoulders because they're just going to have the light metal. So we're going to do the same thing for the other side. So we'll go into edit mode. We're just going to select that circle piece click on the dark metal and assign it, go back to object mode and hide it. We'll go into edit mode of the next object, L to select that circle, click on the dark metal and assign it, go back to object mode and hide it. Then for the claws here, we can just hide these because we don't need that. Then if we just select the wrist, 
We're going to click on the minus to get rid of the metal. And for some reason, when I click on the minus button, it sometimes doesn't get rid of the material. It might be a bug or something, but if I click on the minus, sometimes it doesn't get rid of the material. So if it's not getting rid of the material, then you might need to select the bottom one and then delete both of them. So just delete both of them. And then on the drop down, you can add the dark metal. So we can now hide that object. And then we'll select the palm, we'll go into edit mode, we'll select that face and select the other face on the other side. We'll click on the dark metal and then click on the assign button. All right, so I can now hide that object. So now we'll just select the buttons here and we're going to add the dark metal and then just hide the buttons. Let's just select the control panel here and we're going to add the dark metal. And then if we go into edit mode, what I wanna do is go to the face select and then we're gonna select this face and shift select this face. So with both of these faces selected, we're gonna click on the plus to make a new material. We'll click on new, and I'm gonna double click on this to rename it and call it blue light. So let's now click on the assign button. So now they're assigned with the blue light. Let's now open up the shader editor again so we can kind of see this better. And we're going to click on the principal shader and delete it. And we're going to search in the add menu for an emission material. And we'll put the emission up to the surface. So now what we're going to do is turn up the strength to like a 10. And then I'm going to make it a nice blue color. And if you want to use the same hex code, you can punch in a hex code of 3F9DFF. So this is going to be emitting light. It doesn't look that strong right now, but once we add the glare in the compositor, it'll look nice and glowing. So let's now hide that object. Let's now select the axle here, and we're going to click on the drop down and add the metal, and then hide it. So now for both of these tire materials, I'm going to be adding in my procedural bumpy rubber. So if you want to pause this video, you can go ahead and watch the procedural bumpy rubber material on my YouTube channel. The link to it is in the video description. And then once you've created the material, you can just append it or import it into the project. Or if you want to purchase the procedural material, you can purchase it with the links in the description on my Gumroad store. Or if you're one of my customers of my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack, you're already going to have the material. So if you've set up the Ultimate Material Pack as an asset library into Blender, you can just open up the asset browser in any of your projects. So what I'm going to do is click on this Assets tab that I've created. And so here is my Ultimate Blender Procedural Material Pack with all of my procedural materials. And whenever I create more procedural materials, I update the material pack with the new materials. So we're going to be adding in this bumpy rubber and you can search for bumpy and here's the bumpy rubber so i'm just going to click and drag and drop it here onto the tires or the treads and then let's click back here to go to the shading workspace and then what i also want to do is click on the tire click on the drop down and add the bumpy rubber so now what you can do is you can customize the material if you want to now personally i think the material looks pretty good how it is but you could for example with the node group change the scale of the material you could also change like the dot size so you could kind of make that bigger that's a pretty cool rubber you could change the roughness and things so really you can customize the rubber and make it look how you want but i actually really like how this looks so i'm going to press h to hide both of these objects. All right, now if you don't have my ultimate procedural material pack and you just watch the tutorial or purchase the single material and you just wanna append or import it into your project, what you can do is click on file and you can click on append. So then you can locate to the project files of the bumpy rubber. So I'll go into the blender file, go into the blender file here, then I can go to material and I can click on the bumpy rubber and click on the append button. So now that you've appended it in, if you click on the drop down on the selected object, you can just choose the bumpy rubber. And then you'll have the material here as a custom node group. So now what I'm gonna be doing is creating some glowing eyes and a mouth. And because this is supposed to sort of look like a computer screen with the face, I'm gonna be creating a cool effect where there are like some white lines or some black lines with some blue lines and the blue lines are going to be glowing. So I'm going to select the eyes and let's add a new material. And I'm just going to call this material like face. So what I'm going to do is search for the wave texture, not the wavelength, that was the wrong one. We want to search for a wave texture and drop it here. And let's control shift select the wave texture to preview it. And then with the wave texture selected, I'm going to hit control T to add the texture coordinate and mapping nodes. And I'm going to plug the object up to the vector so that we're using the object coordinates. And then what I'm going to do is take the mapping rotation and we're going to rotate the Y value. And I'm going to type in 90 so it's rotated over by 90 degrees. So now we have these cool little lines here. So now let's change the wave texture settings and the only setting which I'm actually going to change is the scale and I'm going to turn the scale up to 30 so there's more lines. So now what I'm going to do is delete the principled shader and I'm going to instead go to the add menu and search for an emission shader and I'll drop the emission shader right here and I'm going to put the wave texture into the string. So this way where it's black it's not going to be emitting light and then where it's light it is going to be emitting light. And then I'm going to make a nice light blue color to kind of look sci-fi and if you do want to use the same color I'm using you can punch in the hex 
hex code of 3F99FF. So we have that very cool color there. Now what I wanna do is make it a bit brighter because right now it's not very bright. So what I'm gonna do is search for multiply. So type multiply and you can see here's the math multiply node. And we're gonna drop it here. Now here in the value, I'm gonna type in 20. So it's multiplied by 20. So now it looks nice and bright. And later once we add the compositor glare, it'll look even more glowing. And so it'll look even brighter. So that is it for the material. So let's now click on the mouth here. We'll click on the drop down and add the face material. So let's now hit Alt H to unhide all the objects. Let's go back here to the layout and we're going to save the project. So there's all the materials on our robot. Now the materials for the robot is pretty simple, however if you want to in your own time you could add a lot more details to the materials. So one thing that you could add is like some decals. So you could add some different decals with like maybe an electrical icon or some other little sci-fi things. What we could also do is add like some sci-fi normal map decals and you could add normal map decals around the object so that it kind of adds more little details like some little crevices, some little vents and things. And so if you are interested in adding normal map decals to your model then you might be interested and checking out my sci-fi decal normal maps texture pack. So it comes with 50 sci-fi normal map decals. And so what you can do is add them to the materials in the shader editor, and it'll add some really cool sci-fi decals to the model. If you'd like to check out the product trailer video, then I will have a link to it in the description. And also I'll have the product pages linked in the description. Now, before I finish up this part, I do want to set up the glare and the compositing so that like the eyes will glow and it'll just look a bit nicer and you'll be able to really see the effect of the emission materials. So what I'm going to do is click on the compositing to go to the compositing layout. And let's click on the use nodes button and then I have opened up the 3d viewport so if you just click in the corner and drag out and then click right up here to change the editor type, you can change it to a 3D view. And I'm gonna go up into the rendered view. And then also to see the compositing in the 3D viewport, you can scroll right over here to the rendered mode and click on the drop down arrow. And you can go down here to compositor and change the disabled to always. And so this way you'll actually be able to see the compositing in the viewport. So click on the use nodes button. And then what we're gonna do is go to the add menu and we're gonna search for the glare node and drop it here after the render layers. So you can see the glare is adding that really cool effect to the robot's eyes and also that little light down there. Now on the streaks, I'm gonna change this to bloom because I like that better. And on the medium quality, I'm gonna change it to high quality. And then I'm gonna turn the size to like a 0.1 because I think 0.1 is a little bit better. So I'm gonna click back here to go to the layout. And if I click here on the dropdown on the rendered mode, let's change the compositor to always again so we can see it in the rendered mode. So I'll just hit Control S to save the project and that'll wrap it up for this part of the tutorial series. So I hope you're enjoying the tutorial series. I hope you're learning a lot and thank you for watching. So in the next part, in part five, we're going to be rigging the robot. So when the next part is released, I'll have it right up there on the end screen, and it'll also be linked in the video description. So thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next part.